This is Dr. Peter Bregan, and this is another in my simple truths about psychiatry. And the subject today is that psychiatric drugs are much, much more dangerous than you've ever, ever been led to believe by the doctors who are prescribing them. I genuinely believe that if most people knew how dangerous the psychiatric drugs really were, most people would never start on them. And I also believe that if most prescribers had even the faintest idea how dangerous they were, they'd stop prescribing them. Well, how is it that so many people can be ignorant about psychiatric drugs? Well, the truth is because they're all getting their information from the drug companies. I mean, when was the last time you saw a car company leap up to tell people way in advance that they'd had some deaths on the road from their bad breaks? When was the last time a car companies went mea culpa and said, yes, uh, our accelerators are sticking and running people down? Well, I can tell you the drug companies are even worse. They go to all kinds of extremes to avoid letting you know and letting your doctor know how dangerous the drugs are. I know this because I've been a medical expert in dozens of lawsuits against drug companies. I've looked inside drug companies and seen what they're really doing. I was appointed by a court in Indiana to be the scientific expert for over 150 lawsuits against Eli Lilly, suits alleging that the drug Prozac had caused violence, suicide, mayhem, mania and psychosis. So I know what goes inside. I know as much as anyone about how dangerous the drugs are. So let me just give you a little brief outline of material you can find in the first half of my book, Psychiatric Drug Withdrawal. Obviously, the second half is intended to help you come off psychiatric drugs because it can be very dangerous to come off drugs. It's dangerous and sometimes more than starting the drugs. Let's take a look at the stimulants that you may be taking as a college student or as a parent that you may be giving to your children. Follow-up studies on people who were started on stimulants as children show that they have shrinkage of brain tissue, measurable on brain scans. They have reduced height and weight. They're being incarcerated more often than other people. They're going to mental hospitals more often. Their suicide rate is increased. Every single one of these facts documented by follow-up studies of what happens to you if you get started on stimulants. And one particularly well-done study, the rate of cocaine abuse is greater when you become a young person man or woman if you've been put on stimulants as a child. That's because the stimulant drugs such as uh, Ritalin and Concerta and Adderall and Dexedrine, uh, they're so similar to cocaine in their effects. All right, let's look at another group, the sedative sleeping pills that you're taking like Sonata and Ambien, any one of the prescription sedatives used for sleep. We now got two or more good studies showing they shorten lifespan. You can Google them. You can Google practically anything I'm telling you, but you'll get more accurate and direct data from psychiatric drug withdrawal. Now, what about the benzodiazepines, the tranquilizers like Xanax and Valium and Ativan and Clonopin? They're very addictive. You know that people taking Xanax in control clinical trials after a mere six weeks, a large percentage can't get off after a mere six weeks. They become addicts to Xanax. Great for the drug business. Great for your psychiatrist or prescriber who just wants to write prescriptions. Terrible for you. These drugs now, several studies show, like Xanax and Ativan, they're causing shrinkage of the brain too. Coming off them can be an absolute horror story. It can be harder to get off those drugs than to get off opiates. They leave people who try to come off of them with horrendous insomnia, horrendous anxiety, aches and pains in their body, such pain in their feet that they can't stand up, that it's just too much pain, weird feelings throughout their body, and then 
the realization as they come off that their minds aren't working as well, that they have memory loss for the past and have more trouble learning. Now, I know this is hard. You know, it's hard for me to even talk about it, but it's really time to face up to just how dangerous these drugs are. So we've looked at the stimulants and the sleeping pills and the benzos. Now the antipsychotic drugs, which are not really antipsychotic drugs, they're just lobotomizing drugs that are being given to some people for sleep, like Seroquel is being given to people for sleep, and, and Abilify and Latuda and... Uh, um, Risperdal and Zyprexa, all of these drugs, all of these drugs are very damaging to the brain. They, they virtually wreck a part of the brain called the basal ganglia. They cause a dreadful disorder, tardive dyskinesia. I've done a whole Simple Truth video about tardive dyskinesia. They're shortening the lifespan. We have evidence that people who are put on a lifetime dose of these antipsychotic drugs for whatever reason, whether it's to help you sleep at night or because that you're hallucinating and have a lot of problems, 20 years shortened lifespan. And we know some of the ways the lifespan's being shortened because especially these newer antipsychotics, so-called second generation or atypical antipsychotics, they're even worse than the older ones and causing a metabolic syndrome. People get obese. They get diabetes, they get pancreatitis, they get elevated uh, cholesterol, blood pressure is off. And then, since the drugs also cause heart arrhythmias and in combination with other drugs do even more cardiovascular damage, that's one of the ways in which people are having shortened lifespan on these drugs. The mood stabilizers, so-called, which are just flattening, emotionally flattening drugs. Most of them were originally anti-seizure drugs. The one we've stu studied for the longest time is lithium. If you stay on lithium for a lifetime, like your doctor tells you to, you're at grave risk of severe mental problems in the form of memory difficulties, learning new materials, conducting your affairs like you have your whole life. None of these drugs are good for your brain. All of these drugs are bad for your brain. And it shouldn't be any surprise. These drugs are producing multiple biochemical imbalances in brains that don't have any biochemical imbalance until a physician or prescriber puts you on the drug. Now, please, don't just stop taking your drugs because the ultimate tragedy is that coming off of them can be catastrophic. People can get suicidal, they can get violent. Some of the drugs you can get seizures. Some of the drugs can drop your blood pressure if you're coming off. So, you know, get good information. I put everything I know about it in psychiatric drug withdrawal. Get good information, get some good clinical supervision, work with your family or friends. The shorter time you're on psychiatric drugs, almost certainly means that you'll have a better quality of life.